This video is the result of a couple of conversations I've had with people in the last three months about the use of tanks in sea ice physics research and the issue of ice adhering to the size of the tank and flooding itself. So this is a schematic of the Perspex cylinder that we have in the basement of UCL that we're planning to use to grow sea ice. As you can see, we're going to fill it with fake seawater and we're going to make the air cold and then a layer of sea ice is hopefully going to form on the surface of the water and that sea ice may then adhere to the sides of the tank uh, which could cause issues because subsequent growth uh, may not be like real sea ice which grows in mostly hydrostatic equilibrium. So here is what I think might happen. Um, it'll adhere to the sides and the sea ice will then grow downwards thermodynamically and because it's adhered to the sides of the tank and has a lower density than seawater, it's going to displace water. And you can do some back of the envelope calculations and find that um, for a given thickness T, an extra amount of water, uh, about a tenth of the value of T, is displaced and it needs to go somewhere. And if that ice is adhered to the sides of the tank, then we're going to get a tenth the ice thickness of water flooding the system, which could be a problem. Now, it won't necessarily be that big because the ice on the right could start to move upward through buoyancy. It could literally slide up, up the tank and, and reduce this effect. Uh, but we don't know that, I guess. And it's not certain that that buoyancy will entirely compensate for, for the effect I'm describing. So this is one solution that I got from a guy called Kyle Dillaplane, who's done some kind of similar experiments at University of Alaska Fairbanks and what they have over there is they have a big bag of antifreeze a bladder that sits in the tank and is linked to a separate vessel outside that uh, can can basically spill over and I think that's why it's called the skim tank it can it can spill over and account for that extra displaced seawater so as the ice grows downwards it uh it very slowly increases the pressure on the bag and the bag is is totally its volume is is totally variable so it has no stiffness or and, and it's not like a tank it's it's a soft bag and it'll increase the pressure in the purple antifreeze tank on the right which will then spill over to a separate third vessel so that's kind of what it looks like the volume in the middle tank is always the same and then the bag contracts and, and results in in the vessel on the far right filling uh, and this allows for basically the the extra seawater that's generated to take up volume the volume of the antifreeze bag uh, and that extra volume can sort of escape the system into this container on the right and that prevents flooding and it also allows for a more realistic uh, salinity profile and, and more realistic ice surface salinities which is really important for things like uh, brine wicking in snow we, we can't necessarily study brine movement in snow if if we have a a hyper flooded ice surface because our tank isn't isn't working like drifting pack ice works so it doesn't this is a lot of glassware it doesn't have to look like this uh what i would do if i were implementing this is, is have an l-shaped uh pipe just like this and i think that'll do the job just fine basically um we can have it rooted back to the large container that we buy the antifreeze in or something. So we really just need a, a L-shaped PVC pipe and the bladder itself and, and some watertight sealing. And what would, I think it's a really interesting and, and useful experiment to do quite early on to see if this is an important effect and, and to see if it makes a difference. And I'm not saying it does make a big difference, but I'm saying it could make a difference. So uh, that that's something... I think we should consider. 